shut up! Well, hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today I have a little something different in mind because today we'll be talking about Japard or more specifically, I'm making it Japard guide because for one, I really heavily underestimated how strong Japard actually is. And like Japard was my very first five star I ever got on my account. But ever since I got Fushan, I kind of bench him like that story story meme like, I don't want to play with you anymore. I kind of dropped Japard. And when I finally used Japard, I was pleasantly surprised with his output and his performance for like my investment I have on him. So that kind of gave me the idea to make this video for like people that just want some comfort and you need to keep you alive if you have him and you don't really have the staple sustainer like you don't have full shot you don't have whole whole the watcher like if you have your part lying there like it might be a good idea to pick him up and start building him and we'll be talking about a few things about your part obviously we'll be talking about his talent his skills and everything in his skill tree his best like going to use his best relic and planner ornaments his best team his eidolons and things you need to consider if you're using your part. But before we continue onward, if you can just subscribe to my channel, it'll mean the world to me because I really want to hit 800 because it'll be really cool. And also follow me on Twitch as well because I do live stream on Twitch and YouTube. And also join my Discord server. We have almost 50 members and for some reason get more and more active by the day somehow. I don't know why. It just is, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> but anyway, let's get started with this Japard guy, shall we? I'm a captain of the Silver main guards. So about Japar talents and traces, he has a lot of cool stuff but then a lot of useless stuff and a lot of cool stuff as well. So, so I'm just gonna quickly run through this because I think everyone knows what Japar does but if you don't, this will just a quick refresher. His basic attack is pretty normal, just a standard basic attack you'd use to build up skill points for your team. The skill can be either insane or freaking useless sometimes other than giving you more energy than the basic attack. It has a 65 base chance to have a chance to freeze the enemy, which is really good because for one, you can freeze the enemy in a really clutch moment to either get a boy to get CC or just freeze the enemy to avoid getting massive damage on one of your allies. Like the quantum centaur enemy will apply the quantum break effect on you if he hits you with the arrow. Or that one more shocker leak if you don't bring an enemy that can strip debuff. Freezing him can be a good option to just to hold him back a bit. And that one imaginary elite enemy that can apply you with imprisonment. Freezing him before he can do his BS can be really massive for quicker clears. Like like it can actually be really clutch but also at the same time the freeze break effect is sometimes a joke. You can't freeze ice enemies nor any type of boss. Actually there's a few of them you can actually freeze but so little to a point that I kind of minuscule to talk about. The skill is just okay, really insane in some really clutch situation but can also be really useless but can also be nice just to build up your part ultimate. And speaking about your part ultimate, your part ultimate is like one of your part bread and butter. That is big selling point. It grants your part and all the allies a massive shield that are really tanky. Like it can really do so much damage to a point that if you build your part properly, he can be like your only sustain unit on your team. And for priority, always lead the ultimate always first and the skill can be next and basic attack last. But to be honest, I don't even think you should level those two up because for one, the basic attack and skill just increases your part damage output and you don't really care about that. Unless you want to do DPS your part or you just like to see that just for the clear up your OCD. You need to prioritize the ultimate because that's where all the scaling comes out and it can make the shield even stronger. The technique is pretty good because it gives you like a small shield for two turns that basically can protect you at the start of the battle. So like the technique can help you out a bit and give your team some protection until you, your power can build up his ultimate. And for your part passive, it can be either interesting, whatever, or pointless. Okay, for the first one, when your part dies, he basically basically gives himself a whole new revive and 100% energy recharge which can be good in the early to mid game with like no investment and it can be like really clutch sometimes but in the late game the thing become pointless because one if you're the part of the first one to die in your team in high investment I'm sorry but I don't think you should play such a hard game go play some candy crush for a bit and come back later when you have good investment <laughs> alright the next passive is pretty good because one it increases your part aggro which increases 
increase the likelihood of their power getting hit even more which is nice to build up your power energy and can just redirect enemies to hit your power more than your other enemies. And its last passive is kind of useless because it kind of converts a portion of your power defense and attack. Which kind of sucks because for one you don't really use your power for damage dealer role and you don't really build crit on him either. I do think kind of pointless but behind that you can get some defense and effect crit behind that so if you unlock it so you kind of want to get it. And that basically everything about your power and damn for something supposed to be quick that took a while so let's just move on so I could like cones now shall we? <laughs> Bellabog is this planet's last bastion. Like always, Lee, the moment of victory, Japar's signature icon is Japar's best icon because it gives Japar everything he wants around his whole kit. Gives him hit rate, gives him more defense, it's just perfect for him. But if you don't have his signature icon, don't worry, there's still tons of options for him for free to play and gotcha options as well. For free to play options, we have, we have Wildfire and Destiny Tread. And then you have Text of Memory from Simulated Universe. So you have a lot of options, but I would say the Wii or Wildfire one and Destiny tread you both get for free from playing the story and if you've been playing honkai star for a while you probably have like all the su like cohen probably at s5 by now if you've been playing since launch i'm not really a big fan of wheel wildfire because the passive only lasts for five turns and then it like have no passive basically and destiny tread it's really just like a free to play adventuring icon because that really for like preservation units that can be like damage dealers like if you have text of memory that can be a great option but if you're a new player i want to get the other like first before you get that like on then you get i guess you can stick with like wheel wildfire but the gotcha options are so much better though like for one day one of my new life is really good because it boosts your defense and give the basically we are wildfire passive but on no cooldown and then you have land out oath which is honestly a really good one because for one it increased the aggro rate even more and it also can reduce damage as well like it's a very good like one for your part pair that with your part that already increasing his aggro thanks to one of his passives this is actually a really good like one for your part to like get hit even more take less damage and build up more energy to build up your part ultimate and then you have the fourth uh, topaz like one with the value of that Lycon on your pod or Venturing coming up is shot up drastically because for one, it increases your defense, which is nice. But also, if you use a basic attack on an enemy, you apply that enemy with the burn DOT, which for units like Doctor Ratio Akron is extremely good because for one, for Akron, it helps build up the ultimate. And for someone like Doctor Ratio, it's really good because he has a passive that increases crit and crit damage based on how much debuffs apply to the enemy, which is really good. And now, Japard best Lycon. Now let's move on to relics, climate ornaments, and all that junk. And the silver main guards are Bellabog's indestructible shield. Okay, for Japan's best relics, honestly, there's a lot because for one, he has so many options. He has the four piece defense set, the four piece tank set, and the four piece speed set. Like, I would say the four piece defense set is really good, but the thing about Japan is he's so flexible. You can go with any of those sets or like a two piece combo, or like two piece defense, two piece tank, two piece defense, two piece speed. Like, there's so much options you can go for. Like, I would say, like, depending on who your main DPS, like, if you could find a quantum character you can just farm the tank set if you find for your electric character like servo you can just farm the defense set by default all of your farming for blade pieces you can get some speed boots for like your supports and your part like you have options you can farm for and then for your planment ornament it's simple as well because you can go for spiritually which is very good because for one it's increase your recharge and if you go over 120 speed you immediately advance yourself 40 percent forward which is really good they're always broken kill which is very very nice to have to like boost your ally crit damage the other defense one that gives you more defense and if you have a certain amount of hit rate you get even more defense which is also nice for like bulky builds and if you have yang Shing in your team you can also go for that other set that also increases your power recharge which is nice and increases um yang Shing ice damage also more which is nice and now like the relics and climate ornament now let's talk about the main stat and sub that you should go for for using your part so the character you want as much defense as you can possibly give your Japard and speed as well because once you get between 134 to 140 Japard can get that multiple turns so you can build up more energy so your power can basically use the ultimate more often and of course some hit rate as well just to get some creases on enemies that you can freeze so for the head HP and for the glove attack for obvious reasons for the body you can go with either hit rate or defense like as I said for Japard skill right it can be really clutch to free some enemies that can CC you or do big damage to you but 
against enemies that cannot be frozen, it can be a joke sometimes. But since you get so much defense from the other relic pieces and his light cone, like any one you go for that gives you defense, you can generally just go hit rate. And you won't really lose much out for going for hit rate, but if you want to go for defense, that's fine as well. And for boots, you always go speed because for one, we're trying to build up to that 134 to 140 speed for your part because your part is slow as sin. He's so slow that speed boost doesn't even get him close, so you need to build so much speed in your subset where it could be a pain in the ass for like relic RNG. Like I think my job part between 111 to 120 and he still get the ultimates decently fast but at the same time getting 134 to 140 speed will be so much better. That's why I always say he's so hard to build because you want so much speed but if you don't have no speed boost defense boost can work as well. For the orb you go defense every single day and then for the rope you go ER because for one we really want to get your part ultimate as soon as we possibly can so just with building up your part energy recharge is always nice and if you don't have an er rope you can just go defense until you can find that lucky er rope and for the subset go defense speed and hit rate and for the hit rate you want around since your part have so much hit rate on the skill like a 65 bait chance you want around 50 to 60 something hit rate and around 70 to 75 with like basically nearly guaranteed and yeah that was basically the relic let's move on to the final few options shall we by order of the supreme guardian proceed no further you guys better like this video because for one, I am putting way too much effort in this video for no reason. <laughs> but anyways, obviously your part is a unit that can solo sustain and can be placed in any team other than Blade and Jingle teams. Like he can be played with Akron, your DOT team, your Hyper Carry team, your dual DPS comp, though that might be a very skill point negative team. <laughs> like for the sake of this video not being 30 minutes long, I'm just gonna say like it's two or three teams, that's it. Obviously for one, Yang Shang and your part is a godly combo because for one, Yang Yangqing is the only character that actually really needs to shield because if Yangqing get hit, it buff but get disappeared when he get hit. Like a Yangqing hyper carry team with Japar is very nice. And then you have Japar synergy with Akron and Dr. Ratio. Because if you freeze an enemy, that counts as a debuff. And with equipped with a 4 star Topaz Light Cone, when you apply them with that burn effect, that another debuff. So you're basically helping them out a lot by applying debuff while also acting as a sustainer for them. And I did not much to say because for one, Japar is very flexible and can be put in lots of team but one thing to note the synergy with like Sila right because since his shield lasts for 3 turns and I mean 3 turns so like if Sila had her surgeon and take 3 turns she uses the shield so maybe keep Sila away from Japar <laughs> and there's some synergy with Arlen and Japar but at the same time no one actually uses Arlen these days <laughs> and yeah though Japar best team because as I said he's very flexible and can be plotted in mostly every team except for like Sila, Blade and Jinglu basically let's move on to his island now. You will know justice! Alright, uh, let us quickly run through his Eilon because you might get a few of his Eilon by losing 50 50s or pulling him on standard. E1 turned the 65 bait chance to freeze a target to 100% basically. So if you just feel like 50 to 40 hit rate, you're basically perfect. E2, once an enemy that was frozen by Japar's skill on top, their speed reduced by 20%, which honestly is pretty good. E3 increases the ultimate and the talent. E4 is pretty solid because one, if Japar on the field, he gives all his allies. 20% effect res. Nothing crazy, but nothing bad either. So pretty decent if you just get it randomly. E5 is just the skill and basic attack, just boosting his damage a little bit, which is kind of pointless. And your part E6, it kind of sucks for an E6 because for one, when he triggered a talent, which is his revive, when your part dies, he immediately advances himself forward now. And then he heals himself based on 50% of your part max HP. To so say this idol on 6 it sucks is an understatement. This idol on 6 is trash. To the early and mid game, yeah, it's pretty decent, but in the late game, when you fully invest all your gear and build your character properly, if your Japar dies before your other teammates, that kind of a skill issue right there. Like, Japar is so bulky at high investment that it's nearly impossible to kill Japar before your other members die because how squishy your other members are. Like, the one cool thing about Japar I learned is the fact that you don't need any of them because they're good to have, but they're not mandatory as well. Japar feel like a complete crack that E0, which is really good. And yeah, that was Japard Island. Now let's move on to think you need to consider when you use Japard. Only by becoming a shield for the people is one worthy of the title architect. 
All right, thank you have to consider for your part the fact that though he's good and he's still good to this day even though he's an older unit all your part is the shield buff and that's all he offers and his other stuff he offers don't really help him that much because one freezing can be nice sometimes but can you can't freeze everything and nowadays when new preservation units comes out they offer much more than just shielding because four and fusion can basically make you near unkillable while also boosting your crit rate while aventurine gives you shield boosted crit damage and also acted like a little sub dps as well like very soon power creep is gonna hit your pod and even though he technically got power creep by fusion and very soon might, might get power creep by aventurine as well you can still get the job done but there's a few problem because for one he doesn't have a cleanse or no way to prevent cleanses at all other than freezing but we've been through this already if you don't really have him built properly he can probably have some time where he probably won't even get his ultimate back up sometimes and the fact that your power is so freaking slow building between 134 to 140 speed is such a pain in the ass to do when rng just bends you over and just fucks you and don't even offer to give you any dinner like damn <laughs> but if you just get your part right just from losing 50 50 it's still pretty solid as well especially if you don't have those meta units that can keep you alive like honestly with fusion and aventurine being out i still think your part will still have its moment for sure because how i see your part is he basically strongly from genshin impact that you get from losing 50 50s which sounds freaking insane actually <laughs> so if you have a your part and you don't have any of the meta sustain units i would recommend you build them up you'll be some of fun and can keep you alive if you need a sustainer on your account and yeah i think that's about it because go oh boy this video is gonna be a pain in the ass to edit <laughs> so with all that said i think that everything i want to talk about for today's video so thanks for watching i do appreciate you for sure and of course let me know i shouldn't next and let me know what you guys think what to say because i read and respond to all my comments make sure to follow me on all my social medias either in the description or the pinned comment and of course join my discord server as i said if you want to talk to me or any of my community members so come by and say hi it'll definitely be worth your time i bet i'll just make me a happy boy so just join the discord server for me <laughs> and with all that said take care love you guys and i'll see you on the next video goodbye